All right, there you go. Recording's in progress. We're ready to go this evening. Uh, so as I said, we're going to go back to the very beginning uh, tonight with Psalm 1, okay, the two ways of, of life. And um, and I do hope that you're you're going to get a lot out of this psalm, okay? I, I did say that last week, Psalm 103 was my favorite psalm, which is true, okay? But we can like many of them, okay? Many can be our favorites. And I hope you'll think about that as well, okay? Which ones are your, have you been your favorites uh, through this series and what you've learned uh, through this series. Okay, so let me start out by giving you a bit of the background of Psalm 1, okay, um, before we get started here this evening. So first thing is that the first book, okay, so the Psalms, of course, we look at as one book of the Bible. But if you look in Psalms, it's actually separated into different sections. So they're called different books. And the first book is actually from Psalm 1 to Psalm 41. Okay, so the first 41 Psalms make up their own book. Now, most people say that that first book is written by David, but actually Psalm 3 and after is credited to David, but Psalm 1 and 2, we're not given who the author is. It doesn't actually say like, so if you look at Psalm 3, it will say that David wrote this and he wrote this during this time, during this issue. Now, Psalm 1 and 2, the very first Psalms, don't actually give us who was the author, what was the situation when it was written. Um, but um, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe it's because it's 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 not just during a particular situation, but actually Psalm 1 is a, is a really great foundational Psalm. Okay, it opens the whole book of Psalms. And I would say that not just the foundational message for the book of Psalms, but it's also like a very foundational message that can be found throughout the whole Bible. Okay, so it's not just even uh, for the book of Psalms. And Psalm 1, basically, you're going to look through, and I, I hope you can catch this as we go through it, is that it just compares basically the two choices of life. And when you choose, make a decision, a big decision for life, how also that outcome does affect you. All right, so let's look at Psalm 1 together, and it's really just six verses, okay? It's just these six verses, okay? It's it's very short. There's a lot in it, but it's very short. Now, um, can I, is anybody uh, okay to read this, or maybe just even read two of the verses? We could have a few different people read. I'm feeling like my voice is a bit scratchy tonight, so does anyone want to help me out here? I could, I could call out names. I will try not to do so. But would there be a volunteer who could just read through this psalm for me tonight? Okay, Vincent said, okay, is that your offering to read? If so, can you go ahead and unmute yourself? Okay, hi, Thank everyone. You. Okay, I got to get my specs first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, start. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Okay. Oh, you're just going to do two. If you can keep going, keep going, Vincent. You're doing awesome. Okay, all right. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruits, its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. All right. Awesome. Can everyone put your hands together? Thank you so much, Vincent, for being willing to unmute yourself for that moment. Uh, I'm going to mute you back again now, but um, thank you so much uh, for reading through. Okay, so this is the psalm. Now, what I wanted to do is this is our last uh, session in this series of meditating on the psalms. I wanted to actually kind of go through and see like how, how do we meditate on the psalms and go through that process. What more is even in this psalm itself, it does talk about meditating, okay? So I, I wanted to bring you through, I can't bring you through completely the process that I would go through, but I do just kind of want to walk you through 
verse by verse and pick out words and kind of show you some of the process or some of the things that I do that help me to meditate. And we're going to do it as we go through this psalm together. Okay, so I hope that tonight will be uh, helpful to you. I hope that you'll be blessed by this psalm. But I also hope that you'll pick up something that will help you um, to meditate on, on God's word as we go on, okay, and on the other psalms that we've, we've, we've learned through this series. Okay, so the first verse, for example, looking at the first verse, blessed is the man. Now, something that I, I find I do when we're meditating, okay, I, I learned this um, um, from someone years ago, okay, was that we ask a lot of questions. So as soon as we just read, we just read a verse through, right? We just read through a, a verse through that blessed is the man. But what does that actually mean? You know what I mean? Like what, what does it actually mean to be blessed? What is it? What kind of blessed is it talking about? So what I, I like to actually do is I will go through a Bible usually that has um, Greek or Hebrew or the original language and you can see what it means. But sometimes that can be very lengthy. Like it could give like, 10 or 20 different words and sometimes you can get confused. So something that I also like to do is just look at other translations. You know, you can look at other translations and see how did they translate? How how did they bring about that word? Especially today in English, okay? If you speak English, you're so blessed, okay? Because there's like uh, so many translations and, all, and, and so many others that, that take the meanings and others that take the exact words. So for example, when we, I go through something like this, when I, I find a verse that speaks to me, I will look it up in different versions. Okay, I'll look it up in different translations and I will just find the different ways of looking at it. Okay, so for example, blessed is the man. What, what does blessed mean? Now I have here some examples, okay? Uh, for example, the Amplified breaks it down in the original word and then shares all of it, like fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God. So doesn't that give you a bigger picture, right? Blessed is the man. No, no, no. Fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man. Uh, the New Living Translation says, all oh, the joys of those who walk like this or some translations say like oh happy happy is the one happy is the man okay so first of all you get this picture of like yes that's what i want for my life right you're favored you're happy you're joyful okay so we get that picture that person this person the description about is is living life enjoying life this way now who is it about it says who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the paths of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now, I know that seems like a lot of things and you're probably thinking like, oh, well, that's that's not me. So, so I'm the blessed one. Yes, amen. I believe we're all blessed here this evening. But I wanted to show you that this is like, um, this this verse kind of breaks it down in like how, how you can go from walking with someone to standing to sitting. And what that position is, is like when you're walking by something, you're just walking by briefly. It's affecting you for a moment. When you stop to stand somewhere, okay, it, it's taking a longer position. You're allowing more of that influence in. And when you sit down somewhere, it means you're making that spot, right? Like you're choosing to be in that place and to be there longer. You're not just moving along. So I want you to see that in this verse, it shows a progression, a downward progression. Okay, for those, someone who walks, Okay, you don't want to be walking in the counsel of the ungodly. And I just want to be really clear here that we are to be people who are friends with everyone and love everyone. Okay, and I hope that you have friends who are not believers. And I hope you make friends with coworkers and neighbors and people around you and love on family members and everyone who is not a believer. But it's very different thing to be friends with or, or communicate and love on people uh, no matter their background, no matter who they are, what they've done and want to show Jesus to them, then actually going to them for counsel, then actually listening to them for their advice. You know, I, I was sharing one of our youth, our, our young adults the other day, you know, I was sharing to them and saying like, why would you listen to this person's advice? It was a leader in the church. And I said, you listen to the advice of the person you want to become like. And I, I really believe that that's true. Like, if, if, if you want to become like someone, then you listen to their advice. And so I think that's where we have to be really careful. And a lot of times when we run, who do we run to for advice? Who do we run to to get answers from? Do we want our lives to end up looking like them? Okay, so it says that we don't walk in the council. We don't walk along uh, with the advice 
of those who don't know Jesus, because obviously they're going to have such different perspectives and priorities in their life. Okay. He's not going to be a priority in their life. They're not going to understand all of those things, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So you see, there's a progression. It's a downward progression of you are just walking, then you're standing, then you're actually sitting down in their seat, actually taking their place. And, you know, this is something that I, I, I've i learned over the years that, you know, sometimes people think that, oh, that person fell in a day or that marriage broke apart in a day or, you know, how, how did that all happen in a day? And, you know, actually those things don't happen in a day. I, I think that we're not aware sometimes of the downward progression that is taking place, things that are falling apart bit by bit. Like if you ever study about Judas, okay, for example, people all think that like, oh, Judas was like a perfect disciple. And then in one day he fell, you know, he he sold Jesus. But if you go through the Bible, there's very clear statements made and stories made that Judas was not the perfect disciple before he fell. Like he was stealing money from Jesus. Okay. And then he was even like mad at people who were honoring Jesus, like his heart was already not with Jesus before he ever became a traitor, before he ever sold Jesus. You know, his heart was already for money and the money he could steal from Jesus before he ever sold Jesus for that money. So it may look to us like suddenly it's in front of our eyes, something is revealed and it's like, oh, wow, that person just fell in a day. And, and why I want to share this is because we just want to be aware in our lives. And as this Psalm is going to share to us that the decisions we make in our life, like when you prioritize Jesus, it is going to have great outcomes in your life. When you when you love the word of God, it is going to bring great outcomes in your life. But if you are not going to him for good counsel, if you're going somewhere else, if you're starting to follow what other people do in the world, then that is also going to have an outcome. And it doesn't usually happen right away, but it's little subtle changes that are happening in our lives. So I, I thought this is just a really interesting psalm to me in that way that really shows us the way that we are choosing for our life like the steps that you're taking who you're sitting with what's what the choices you are making really do have that kind of effect okay that's the first verse so let's let's move on and now it gives us the more the positive okay this blessed person okay this blessed happy joyful favored by god they're not doing all those things so what are they doing it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he meditates day and night. Now, I know most of us here are from TNCC, the new covenant church. We're like, oh, we don't live by the law anymore. Okay, yes. Now you have to remember that Psalms was written before there was a new covenant, okay? So what does the word law actually mean? Was it just referring like to the law of Moses? Was it just referring to that? Once again, I would turn to different translations, okay? So is our, what is our delight in? So other translations, for example, uh, the footnotes from the New King James Version, which is what I'm using today, says the instruction, okay? Your delight is in the instruction of the Lord. The Amplified breaks it down to his precepts and teaching. The Passion Translation uh, puts it a word like this, like the word of I am, like God's word, who he is. And so I want us to understand when we see a verse like this, don't just throw it out because you're saying like, oh, I, I, I don't have my delight in the law. You know, I know the law is, is, is not what I'm following now. I'm a new covenant believer. Yes, that's correct. But you have to understand what is the law actually signifying here? They didn't have Old Testament, New Testament. They didn't have the Bible that we have it broken down today. So it is more signifying, you know, the instruction, the words of God. So in his law or in his words, okay, in his instruction, he meditates day and night. Now, I know sometimes when we first hear the word meditation, you know, we may think like uh, like something new agey, but I believe all of us here can understand like biblical meditation and, and what that means. So I also look up what is the word meditation or how do other translations uh, bring about this word? Now, the Amplified says like habitually meditate. So it's not like a one day thing. You said, okay, these 24 hours, I'm gonna think about this. Okay, but it's more like a habit in your life that when you read the word you actually think about it it's not just about like how many chapters we can read in a day how many verses can we read in a day i at one time i read the bible like that okay i was trying to do that you know you read the bible in a year and actually i really encourage you all please you know read the bible front to back read the bible it's i mean 
at least once in your life, you should read the Bible front to back. Okay. We should get a big picture and really know everything that is, is written in it. But I think what's also so important is having the habit to meditate, to not just read, but to actually think and question and, and ponder, you know, so, so here's from the Wycliffe translation, you know, it says, think about it, that we actually think think about God's word as we go through the day, not just in that one moment, you know, when we read, but, you know, and sometimes we think, oh, Susan, I, I'm working all day. Like I can't be sitting around thinking about the Bible. Yes. I totally understand that. I'm not encouraging you to like stop everything you're doing and think about it, you know, the whole time. But I think that we, we do take time to think about other things. Like you can't tell me that you don't, when you're at work, it never crosses your mind to think about your problems, to think about what else you have to do, right? So in the same way, when we're doing a task, often our mind is not absolutely absorbed there, but it's thinking about the next thing, it's thinking about something else. And so in the same way, when we're doing a task, we can be reminding ourselves, like when we see something, we don't know what to do, like, I'm the favored one of God. What does that mean? And, and meditating on it. Okay, the Good News Translation says it could be to study it, uh, day and night. And I like this other one from the message. It says to chew on scripture. Okay, like we know like Jesus is the word, is like the bread of life, right? So think about like, you don't just take a piece of bread and like swallow it whole, right? You chew on it, you chew on it, you make it edible. And, and that's how, you know, you digest it and it gives you strength. And I think in the same way with the word of God, we can take out, like, I like to take out something that's just one verse like if I read through a psalm and I love reading the psalms yeah I think before I sleep that is one of my favorite things to do is to read one of the psalms you know and and what I do sometimes is take out this one verse and think about what each one of those words mean or that one statement that one promise and begin to really think like how does that affect me what does that mean for me and so I just encourage you all to think about that as you as you read a verse something that jumps out at you something that becomes alive from the Holy Spirit how do you meditate on it? You kind of chew on it. Like you, you bring it up again. You think about it and you, you wonder like, now, what does that mean for me? If that is true, like how is my life changed? Okay. So as we talk about meditating on the word, this is, this is some of, of what, what I do. And, and it says that this is like our joy. This is our delight is actually to remember the word of God. And I'll tell you this, right? That actually it will give you so much joy. Because we spend so much of our brain time focused on the negative. Can you imagine the amazing, amazing effect when you spend it thinking about his promises, his word, who he is, uh, what he said to us, who we are. I mean, it's just, it changes everything. So I actually wanted you to think about that for a moment. Okay, so if you can type it in the chat, uh, please start preparing. I'm going to share like an example. And then I, I just want you, like, uh, what promise, what word, what revelation helped you when you meditated on it? Like, have you ever been in a situation when a verse came out to you, you kept thinking about that verse and then it actually like, it actually helped you get through the days to come. It could have been a verse. It could have been one of the promises. Um, maybe it's a larger thing. It was a preach you heard or a revelation of who Jesus is. So can you just type that in the chat? It could be the verse, could be the promise, could be the revelation, whatever it is. You know, I think uh, I'll, I'll share as I'm waiting for you to write in the chat, okay? Uh, I think many of you, if you were in TNCC when I first came like many, many years ago, you remember uh, one of the one of the preaches that I, 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 one of my verses that I love and a preach that I shared at that time was called, He Goes Before You, okay? And, and, and I still hear some of those people praying it now in TNCC, you know, He Goes Before You. And, uh, and I remember that that was something like I was a bit, feeling a bit down at that time things hadn't been working out as planned and when I read in Isaiah those verses and and I just took them one by one and it talked about he goes before you and like things that look like a mountain it says that he he brings it down flat so you're able to walk on the roads that were curved and you couldn't see where you're going he makes them straight and that verse I, I read it as I was on a plane and I just thought about it and prayed about it while I was on the plane. And when I arrived in the city, I just thought about it again and I started praying it out and I started thinking like, if that is true, then I'm not going to imagine mountains in front of me anymore. Like, no, he brings it down. And I, I just started claiming it over me. And, and, and I feel like meditating is it keeps coming back up. You keep bringing it back up. It's not like, oh, I read that verse you know, is done. But I kept bringing it back up. And you know what is the funny thing is before anything changed in my situation, I just felt so happy. Like that verse was mine. I was like, this is God's promise to me. And even though it didn't change the situation right away, it changed my outlook. 
And, and as some of you know, have heard me preach about that message. Um, I really experienced those verses come true. Like in the months to come, I literally saw those verses take place and shape and, and, and in front of my eyes. Okay. It really did happen. And so I want to encourage us that when we take those verses, we really meditate on them, think on them. They become ours. It's like a personal thing. You know, it's not just like a one time you keep, you meditate, you keep bringing it back up and it can change your perspective. You know, it can change suddenly how you see a situation. Okay, so many of you are writing down. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your participation tonight. All right, here's some of the promises or some of the words. Uh, I would never leave you nor forsake you. Ooh, is that a good one, okay? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Again, is like, what portion of a verse, but so meaningful. Okay, uh, Romans 8, 1. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ. Oh, that's so freeing, right? When you really get that and think about that. Okay. I can do all things through him who gives me strength at all times. Yes. How good it is to meditate on this. Okay. You, know, you don't feel weak. You remember who you are. Okay. Or Psalms 23, all of Psalms 23. Okay. That's so good. And such a good one that we can memorize in so many different sections of that. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a hope, a future and a hope. Amen. Right. This one is so good as well, just to um, to think about even each thing. You know, I mean, it can, it can change how you see your future, you know, when, when you meditate on that. OK, Deuteronomy. Also, some other verses thrown in here. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. I'm assuming that's the blessing portion, not the curses portion, because we're in Christ. Right. <laughs> OK, so all the blessings we receive. OK, and first Corinthians uh, four to seven. OK, so good uh, about about his love. OK, and that can be a, such a huge revelation as well, freeing you and, and changing your life. Awesome, everyone. Thank you so much. And, and that's the thing is, I hope you realize that all these promises, right? And some of them are well known, uh, some more than others. But isn't it amazing that that actually changes your life? And not just because you just heard it one day, but actually when you take the time to think about it, maybe, you, maybe you're like me and you're like, imagine it, okay? You're, you're like, see it happening over your life, that it actually changes, okay? How you see things, how you feel about things. Uh, it, the word of God is really so, so powerful. Okay. So we have only gone through a few verses, so let's, let's pick it up. But I'm, I'm so thankful that, that all of you are like showing me your verses that you meditate on. So this is the result. Okay. We've been talking about blessed, the happy favored person who, who doesn't walk or stand or sit. Okay. According to what other people are doing. But instead, meditate, choose on, you know, studying the word of God. This is the outcome. He, now remember that he is actually he or she or any of us, okay? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So the first part is a picture, right? It's like a tree. And so you want to actually maybe get that like in your imagination, a tree what does it mean to be a tree planted by rivers of water? Brings forth a uh, fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither. So you're seeing something that's fruitful and alive. Okay, it, it's not out in the desert and drying and, and dependent on someone coming and giving it water every day. It's got, it's connected to the source. It's connected to the source that does not go dry. Okay, it, it's, it's firm, it's fruitful. And then here, if you say whatever he does shall prosper. So this is kind of like moving out of that, that um, like picture of the tree. And then it's becoming personal again, that whatever he does shall prosper. Now, of course, many translations you succeed. Uh, when I looked up the other, some other translations for you here, like in the message, it says like always in blossom. So going back to that tree, like it, it's always, even if it's not bearing fruit, it's a blossoming. You can always see that there's life and change and things are taking place. In the Amplified, it says that he shall, all he does shall prosper and come to maturity. So it means that you're not stopping like halfway, okay? It's like this person is able to, to things are complete. They're going through the mature process. Uh, the, the Passion Translation says, never fainting, uh, never, I believe it says never fainting, never tired, always blessed. Wow, who wants to receive that over your life? All right. Oh, and never fainting, never tired. Okay, but always, always blessed. Always feeling favored uh, and joyful and happy. 
These are actually the effects. Now, like I said earlier, right? So just when we meditate on the word, it doesn't mean that immediately our circumstances change, but it does change us. Okay, God doesn't promise that all of your circumstances will change. It's not like you you meditate on a verse tonight about being prosperous, suddenly wake up tomorrow, you know, and all your problems are gone. But I, I believe that what meditating on the word does, it really changes our perspective. It reminds us of who we are in Christ, you know, how blessed we are, who is our father, what is his promises to us. It shapes the way we see our future. It, it shapes the way we see the difficulties in front of us. It shapes our priorities. And so you may find that, you meditating on the word, maybe around you is still a desert, but you become like this tree. Okay. You become alive. Uh, and that's why I pray is happening to you tonight as well. Okay. As we go through this Psalm and kind of meditate uh, on this one Psalm together. Now here's the stark contrast. Okay. So you, you see that those who meditate on the word, who, who love the delight, their heart is, is remembering what God has said to them. They're like a tree by water. They're like evergreen, okay? Evergreen and blooming and having fruit. And here's the contrast. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. So when the wind can drive it away, it means it's not rooted. It means it's dry. It means that like the wind, not even a tornado or a hurricane, okay? It's like the wind can just pick it up and bring it somewhere else. There's no stability. There's no strength. And so you see the difference, right? We are a tree, okay? We are a tree planted by the water, like deep roots, source of life. And then it says that those who who are, uh, other versions say like righteous or not righteous. Well, we know our position of righteousness is in Christ, right? So those who are not, then, I mean, no wonder you see people in the world today are depressed and in a state of confusion. They don't even know who they are. And they're blown around by trends and by situations in the world and by the bad news. And that's a stark contrast to who we are. Okay, so I want you even tonight, maybe before you sleep, is like to think about the strength and the stability, even if you feel like you don't have it right now, the strength and the stability and the life that you have from your source, Jesus. It says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand uh, in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. It means that there's such a difference. Like, it just means that you, you can't even be in the same group. Like, it, it is starkly different, those who believe in the Lord and those who do not. And, and, and sometimes if we feel like there's not that big of a difference, then I think it's good for us to come back and meditate or remember who who we are. This is not a pride thing, not that we are better than anyone else. Please, please, please be aware of that, right? We are all the same, like helpless people. Uh, it's just that we have received help from Jesus. And that's why we also want everyone else to as well. Now, this last part of the verse says what? For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, it's like two ways of life. Okay, so so this is the, the, the end where you're you're choosing your way of life. Now, if you imagine if you had a clear path, okay, you had a clear path in front of you. One is like, okay, the Lord knows this way. He's prepared this way. And, and, and it's like what we said earlier, it's fruitful. It's full of life. It's blessed. It's favored. Okay. It's like, and then you see the other path and it's completely the opposite. You know, it's drying, it's dead, it has no strength and stability, uh, you know, no joy. I mean, who who could not make an easy decision to choose which path, all right? I don't have to ask you today, I know which path. But it's, I thought it's interesting, it says the Lord knows. So once again, this is something I want to do. When I, what does it mean that the Lord knows the way of the righteous? I, I go through different translations and I go through uh, you know, uh, going back to the original language and we'll look up what, what does it mean that he knows? Now we know that we're righteous in Christ, right? So what does it mean that God knows our way? Well, actually, for example, in the NIV, it says watches over. Okay. But I like in the message as well, it says starts the road. Like he goes before you and makes that way. How does God know the way? Because he has actually made the way for you. That's how he knows the way. Okay. And the amplifier also says that he knows and fully approves of the way of the righteous. Now, it means that when you, when you're choosing, you know, uh, your, your things on life and you're choosing to go to Jesus and, and, and listen to him and let him give you wisdom and lean on his strength and his source of life for you. And you're 
following the plans he has for your life. You imagine you're following like what he has already set over you and the way that he has prepared for you. And, and this just reminds me of this really beautiful verse, okay, that's in Ephesians 2.10. And I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. It says, for we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. So to me, this verse is like a summary of like what we have in Christ, according to Psalm 1, now we see it in the new covenant. Okay, that because we are in Christ, we're transformed, we're renewed, we're, we're you know, he has actually gone ahead of us, creating a path for your life. Like, I love this, it says he has like chartered, okay, he's, he's already marked it out. He's already knows what every little thing is going to happen. He's already walked ahead and set that ahead for your life. Okay, so that you can walk in them. So the reason sometimes I think we, we were confused, like, how do I know which decisions to make what to do? But actually, we don't have to create paths for our life. We don't have to create the way he already did that for us. And it says that when we just walk and we just follow him, we are living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. We are that blessed, favored, happy, full of life, stable and secure, uh, fruitful person that we have read about in Psalm 1. Okay, so let's let's look at the two different ways, okay? So we talked about like the walk, the way of the godly, the way of the ungodly. So you can look, there's in this Psalm, it just breaks it down, okay? One is life, one is death, okay? One is blessings, one is curses, one is good, one is evil. One is the way that God watches over, the way he's prepared, and the other way is that, is the way that's perishing, and, you know, lately I've even been thinking about it a lot that like when people don't have Christ in their life, right? I just cannot imagine. I've been saying this a lot lately, right? But like, I just cannot imagine my life without Jesus. Okay. I just can't imagine the state I would be in. I'm still in, I'm still a work in progress. All right. Like I'm still uh, far from perfect here, but I am just so thankful of who I am today because of Christ. Anything good in me is because of him. And I just can't imagine if you are walking down a road alone without knowing your creator, without knowing the love of your savior, without having these promises to strengthen you and a hope to hold on to, without that daily communication with him, that strength, that life, a purpose, you know, having a calling and a purpose to walk out and knowing what you have in him and leaning and taking that wisdom and that joy. Like, can you imagine what a sad, lonely, like horrible life that is. And, and I hope this this makes us just realize how blessed we are to be people who have been made right with God through what Christ has done. And also to give us compassion uh, for those who are not, okay? Not compassion that we become like them, okay? To know our boundaries, to understand that we are to reach them, we are to love on them, but we do have to be careful of how much counsel we're taking in, how much we're becoming like them. Uh, but just to help us to really see the difference. So these are the two ways of life. And I know you've all made your decision. Okay, you follow the way, you're following the Jesus way. Uh, and just to remind us like how how blessed we are. So I wanted to kind of summarize it like this, right? That in Christ Jesus, we're already the righteous. So when this, when this verse talks about the godly and the righteous, that's you. Okay, that's me. That's why the blood of Jesus, we have already been made righteous. We are safe for eternity. We are secure in him. You know, we, we gain all of that. So, so then people ask, well, why? Why then do I have to meditate on the word? Like I already have everything in Jesus. Well, it ties in a little bit to my preach on Sunday, right? That you can have so many things in Jesus, but if you're not aware of them, it's like they're in this dark room and you're not using them. You're not aware of them. You know, so in the same way that when we, we have so much in Christ, like the Bible is full of promises, full of promises that are yes and amen in Christ. So when we put our mind on his word, when we're meditating on the word, we're thinking about it, letting that pop back up in our mind as we go through the day, you know, we're feeling down, but we remind ourselves, no, it said that I'm blessed. It said that I'm favored. You're reminding ourselves who we are and what we have in him. It can actually help us to experience what he's already prepared for us, you know, and to be fruitful in his kingdom, 
you know, to not just be like, okay, yeah, I'm saved. I'm going to wait to go to heaven, but to actually live out the Christ life here on earth, to be fruitful, to walk in the blessed way he has already prepared for us. So yes, you are already saved. You are already righteous. You don't have to meditate on the word to get those things, but yet meditating on the word has incredible blessings and practical help for you. You know, it could, as I said, even if it doesn't immediately change your situation, which it can also do, it changes you. Okay. It, I mean, it also talks about it in, in Romans, right? It's like, it's renewing your mind. It changes the way that you look at things. It, it changes the way that you see everything. It puts your priorities in order. And so it's so, so um, important. And I'm so thankful we had this series on meditating on the Psalms. And I hope that you take some of those. You know, sometimes we, I know so many of you say your favorite Psalm uh, was like Psalm uh, 23 or Psalm 91, mine was 103. But I'm just wondering as you went through these Psalms, was there another Psalm that you jumped out at you that you meditated on. Okay, can you can you put that in the chat? What psalm during this series spoke to you? Okay, we've gone through through so many of them. Okay, so I'm just wondering if you remember, was there any one of them that like specifically uh spoke to you? I didn't ask you at the beginning if you all have been attending, but I'm, I'm quite sure you've all, most of you here have been attending all of them. Maybe you haven't attended all of them, but please do, uh, please do write it in the chat. Uh, if you can remember now, we have gone through, okay, Psalm 5, Psalm 8, Psalm 23, Psalm 42, Psalm 91, uh, 27, Psalm, uh, Psalm 46, and 103 and tonight we went through psalm one was there any like specific verse or was there a, a psalm that that spoke to you that you took time to think about uh as we went through this series and if you didn't that's okay okay someone put here psalm 23 i you know psalm 23 is so popular we you know everyone knows it and memorizes it but there is so much in psalm 23 uh, that I think we can always go back to it again and again and again. Like sometimes I've discovered so many new things. It could be about, you know, a still waters. It could be about the leading you. It could be about the staff. You know, it could be about sitting at the table feasting. You know, there's so many areas of it um, that you can go back and be blessed. Okay, thanks so much. Anyone else uh, want to write down what was a psalm that you meditated on or that spoke to you as you went through this series? Uh, and as I said, and if you didn't do it, as you went through the series, the Psalms are not going anywhere. Okay. They're going to be still in your Bible. They're still going to be there tonight and the next days uh, as you go through. So I would encourage you like as much as you do your, you know, your daily Bible readings, your devotions, uh, your time um, to, to sometimes take words. Okay. Like we did here tonight, take a sentence, take a word and ask, what does that word mean? And what does that mean for me? How is that going to change my life if that's true? You know, and you can even picture it and you can pray it over yourself and you can start declaring it. And you can remember that every promise is yes and amen in Jesus. It includes all of these. Okay, another one from Psalms 23, but this one is more specific. Verse four, even though I walk through the, ooh, different version here. Sunless, this must be amplified. Ah, yes, amplified. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. Amen. Now, Charmaine uh, shared here from the Amplified, which I've done a couple of times tonight, uh, rather than sometimes going back to the original word and, and trying to figure out what it means, Amplified is a good Bible not to read huge passages from. Amplified is good when you're meditating on a specific verse or passage, okay? Because it will break down the words in that way and give you a deeper meaning. So it's not meant for large amounts of reading it is meant to help you actually when you do things like meditate on the word all right psalm 91 i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i trust amen so good and there's also psalm uh 23 uh verse 5 okay spoke to you as well wow so much from psalm 23 still everyone's favorite psalm i guess Okay, so tonight as 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 we're uh, looking, as we look at the whole again of Psalm 1, you see here again, the two ways of life. Okay, now you have, you have chosen your way of life, 
the way, the truth, and the life is Jesus. Okay, you have chosen um, to walk in, in the way of Jesus. But I just want to remind us again that this, this delight or taking joy, taking time to actually sit and think through um, the word of God, these Psalms, the promises of God, actually is such a blessing that God gave to us in that way. Okay, and that it actually has real uh, effects for each and every one of us. Okay, one more. Walking through the valley, the valley of the shadow of death, speaks to the hardships and trials we encounter in life. This verse reminds us that God is with us during these difficult times, offering guidance and comfort. It's a reminder that even in our darkest moments, we are not alone. Amen. And that's the thing that I find... Um, really amazing about when you meditate on the word of God, like the Bible is big, right? The Bible is big, yet it can be one sentence. It can be like one phrase. When you meditate on that and you really get it deep down, like that's how you see yourself. That's how you see your future. It has enormous abilities to change you. Okay, so one verse, one phrase, meditating on that you know sometimes what I've done is like this you can take a whole psalm and just each day meditate on one and you'll find like just thinking as you go through the day speaking that phrase out to yourself uh we we you, I've done this before uh sometimes you find a verse put it on your on your screen on your phone because you look at your phone like a zillion times a day so when you have a verse that you're meditating on sometimes all you need is just that little reminder that pops up on the screen of your phone no, go back to doing that. Okay. It's just really powerful to kind of put it back in your mind, renew and refresh your mind as you go through the day. Um, okay. We have recently from the Bible reading of Psalms. Okay. Not the Wednesday meditation. That's right. Okay. Thanks, uh, Pastor Allen. We have also gone through the Bible reading on the Psalms uh, in the recent past. It was from Psalms 92. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no wickedness in him. Wow. Okay, so this is a good one, okay? Uh, for all of you who maybe feel not so young, okay, in the older age, there's a promise to still bear fruit, be fruitful, okay, still be living with purpose and flourish, okay? even in old age. Uh, uh, Pastor Vincent just added on to our our, our sh valley uh, uh, of the shadow of death. He said, it's just a shadow of the valley of death, not even death itself. And the Lord is already there to comfort and protect us. See, isn't that amazing? That's, that's an example of meditating and just thinking about why is it shadow? Why is it not is the valley? It's, it's the shadow alone. It's not even the real death, but it's just the shadow even of death. And he still even promises that he will be there with us. You see how each word, like each word in the Bible can be so meaningful. All right. So that is, uh, I thank you so much for your participation, everyone. Thank you so much. You were like, you saved like the most participation for, I think for the last night. Thank you so much. Give yourself a hand. And I will open it now for, for questions. You've been listening to me talk now for like, a while okay so since Vincent read the verses all right so um if you have any questions uh do please uh write them down any other questions you can write them down still some comments going on about some of the uh, the verses and the revelations from Psalm 23, which is amazing. I love that we can each keep adding to each other, picking out different words, picking out different things. Uh, if you do have any questions, um, do let me know. Okay, before I think close things for this evening. Uh, and just a reminder that this is our last uh, session um, of, of the meditating on the Psalms, but uh, we will be uh back again soon okay we will be back again soon uh for uh, our new series in about sonship all right is there any other questions uh before we go tonight uh if any of you have been here for all of the psalms okay you've been here since psalm 5 okay all the way up to like 103 and back down to 1 okay if you've been on this journey 
uh, why don't you raise your hand? You can give me an emoji hand. Uh, you can give me a real hand and a video. Anybody been here for the whole series? Yay, Auntie Marie. Okay, Uncle Leach. All right, a few of you there. Who else, anybody else for the whole, have been here for or at least for like 90% of it. I think I've seen some of you coming in like every single week, uh, which is so, so awesome. I think some of your hands went up real quick and came back down. So I may have missed you, but so, so good. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I don't see any questions at this point. So you know what? It's our last night and we're gonna, um, and we're gonna be meeting at camp next week. If you have not signed up for camp, please go sign up for camp. Okay, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be such a good time uh, together. Uh, so so I do hope you'll immediately go sign up for camp and we will see you there. Uh, for tonight, I'm just gonna, I think I'll, I'll close things here. I'd like to see each and every one of you turn your video on. Give me a big wave. I see Auntie Braun coming all the way from the US. Who else is here with us tonight? All right, give me a big wave and a big smile. All right, Ben, thanks for joining us tonight. We will see Thanks, you Thank Sunday. Good night, Susan. Good night, Susan. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Good night. Hello. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Hello. Thank you, Pastor Susan. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.